We have our next guest, he's Barry Nussbaum. He is host of The Truth Report right here on this network. Thanks so much for joining us today, Barry. It's great to be with you this morning or <laughs> afternoon. I, I know, I'm over here on the West Coast and every time we start the show, uh, I'm so tempted to say good morning, but then practically for the rest of the country, it's it's good afternoon, but it still feels like morning to me until noon. Anyway, um, so Barry, talk to us uh, about your show and your involvement with the network. American Truth Project is a 501c3 nonprofit. We report on four key issues, uh, terrorism around the world, homegrown terror, both of those mostly Islamic, as we believe that is the big threat to this country and uh, stable governments around the world. We report about Middle Eastern policy, and we also talk uh, a great deal about the relationship between Israel and the United States. Israel is our most strategic ally in the United States. It's the front line against terror, and that's why the relationship is so important. We go deep, and we tell the story here on AVN that most people never get to hear. And what is the response to that? How many people do you have following this? I mean, this has got to be huge for the country and for certainly for the Jewish communities. We are getting tremendous feedback on the content we're putting up, especially on the Islamification and infiltration of radical Islam into the United States. Some of our stuff has been seen over a million times. The education that we're providing is spreading, although we're not on mainstream media much as the support for President Trump that exists out there doesn't make it to the news. Uh, we're very encouraged by what we're doing. We're getting great feedback and great support, and we will continue to educate on these subjects, uh, hopefully to a bigger and bigger audience as time progresses. So. Barry, perhaps you can illuminate this because this this always just astounds me. Um, you know, you've got liberals in America who are pro-Palestinian. Of course, the DNC convention in 2016, they flew the Palestinian flag. Uh, you've got people like Linda Sarsour on the left, um, the CNN contributor that we just were talking about, Mark Lamont Hill, who uh, speak against Israel. And I've always wondered, you know, this this relationship between Jews in America, the left, and Israel. Um, I read along the way somewhere that only eighty or that eighty percent of Jews in America only identify as Jews culturally, uh, not necessarily religiously. So maybe that has something to do with it. But these comments by Mark Lamont Hill uh, towards the UN, he said that Israel should be replaced by a Palestinian state and basically defended the Palestinian use of violence against Israel. You were recently in Israel, so you have first-hand knowledge of that, but before you answer, I think we have a video clip, uh, some of your own footage that we want to air. Okay. And that is a free Palestine from the river to the sea. Thank you for your time. That horrific comment by Mark Lamont Hill, as CNN calls him, our distinguished scholar, the professor from Temple University, uses the words, from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. That's the slogan of Hamas, and it's a thinly veiled mass murder call to eliminate the Jewish presence in Israel. In other words, kill eight million Jews and replace them with a Palestinian state based on and run through the laws of Sharia. This is from a man who has never set foot in Israel, but is a social justice warrior, and he knows better than all the citizens of Israel, Muslims, Jews, Christians, atheists, straights, everybody gets to vote, everybody gets equal rights, everybody can run for office and be a member of the Knesset, which is their parliament. It is the only country in the Middle East that, that gives those freedoms, unlike every other country in the Middle East, where if you're a Jew, if you're a Christian, if you're a non-believer, if you're an apostate to Islam, you can be put to death for a myriad of crimes under Sharia. Things like adultery or thievery or leaving the religion or renouncing Muhammad, all conceptually, 
could subject you to the death penalty. And yet, Mark Lamont Hill goes before the United Nations and calls for the elimination and the murder of millions of Jews. Ironic, isn't it, that like his fellow social justice warriors who have never been there, they know better. Israel is the only country in the Middle East for a thousand years to grant those rights to all citizens, and yet this man gets a platform on CNN. I hope it's short-lived. I hope they boot him out as they should, and I hope Temple University kicks his ass out of the university campus and out onto the street where he belongs. Why do you think that we don't hear about the culture that he is defending? Why are we not hearing about Sharia and not getting the true story in that? I mean, you know, we just talked about GM in my state. Here we also have this judge that just let them off the hook for female genital mutilation. These are horrific things that happen in these countries. They want to bring this to the United States. We're seeing this in Germany. We're seeing this in Sweden. It's just a complete nightmare. We're not hearing about it. Nobody's talking about what these people are going through in other countries. And there's people in the United States that are romanticizing this type of culture and wanting to bring it here. Why do you think that is? I think it's a few things, and it's it's a brilliant question, and it's the one that is the conundrum that we're all trying to answer. The most basic one-sentence answer is lack of education. Going all the way back to Thomas Jefferson, you should read his diary, where he talked about the incompatibility of the new United States Constitution with the Constitution of Islam, which is Sharia, the Quran. The Quran calls for worldwide caliphate under the word of Muhammad, meaning female genital mutilation, slavery, subjugation of women, being able to kill non-believers, conquering the world, subjugating everybody that doesn't believe. I mean, it's right there in the book, and it's, it's, it's an apostate statement to say, I'm not going to follow that. You can be put to death if you're a Muslim and you reject any of Muhammad's teachings. So more specifically in terms of today, why it is the way it is, people just don't know. So they celebrate wearing the hijab, which is a sign of female subjugation. The reality is a woman has at most half the value of a man. In terms of testimony, 30%. In other words, if a woman is in a Sharia court in the United States and is accusing someone of rape, She can't get a conviction unless, get this, she shows up with two witnesses to the rape to testify against the rapist. And if she's found not to have those witnesses, she is guilty, get this, of adultery under Islamic law. Now, most women don't know that. So you you have a woman's march with someone on the stage who helped organize it, who calls for the death of Israel. And all the social justice warriors on the stage have no idea what that means. They have very little idea how horrific female genital mutilation is. And why do judges have an idea, like the one you just talked about, that that's okay to mutilate a woman permanently against her will? Basically, they're progressives. And they don't want to step on any toes. And they don't want to make anybody wrong. And it's the old, everybody gets a trophy and nobody comes in second place. Where, oh, where is the justice in social justice? Absolutely. And, you know, like you were saying, we're making a full revolution back to your original comments. That what it comes down to is lack of education. And these social justice warriors, I mean, I can't imagine that social justice warriors would speak on something that they have no idea about. I mean, I just can't believe that that happens. But Barry, we have some footage that you actually took there on the ground in Israel. Um, and I have a feeling about what it's going to look like because I was in Shtarat uh, in August and it is the bomb shelter capital of the world. But you got some really amazing footage. So I want to air that now. We are on the en- one of the entrances to the town of Sderot, which is the town in southern of Israel that sits just across from the Gaza border. These are the homes in Sderot where people wake up in the middle of the night and hear tunneling under their houses. This is 15 second warning area. I'm in front of a bomb shelter. There's one of them every several blocks because every single person knows wherever they go in Sderot, there has to be a bomb shelter within 
sirens right now, this is where we will run until we're back in the car. Yeah, that's amazing. I, I, you and I might have been there around the same time, but uh, the town of Sturrott is 15 to 20 second zone, as you said in the video, where you have time to to reach a shelter. But what amazed me was um, we, we actually spoke to the mayor of Sturrott, and I'm saying Sturrott, I guess I've been back in the States for two months, so I've Americanized the term, but Sturrott. And we spoke to the mayor and he, he spoke to us about statistics, and I can't remember the specific number, but the amount of children who are now living with PTSD because of this. Did, I'm sure you witnessed that while you were there and taking this video. That video I just showed you was me standing in front of a bus stop in Sturrott which doubles as a bomb shelter. Every building has a shelter of some kind. With this bomb shelter, the way it works is if a siren goes off, you run around the corner and run inside. It's solid uh, 18 inches of concrete and it will protect you unless a missile is a direct hit. It's intended to block shrapnel. Can you imagine dropping your child off at school in the morning and telling your child, honey, if the siren goes off, run as fast as you can and get into the shelter so you don't die. Everybody in this town has PTSD of a certain degree. They've all grown up with missiles landing on them their whole lifetime. It's just a few seconds warning from the Gaza launch, the alarms going off, and the missiles starting to land. And as you drive around, every building has shrapnel marks on it, and everybody knows someone who has died. And get this, Sterot is, always has been, part of Israel from the beginning of time. These are missiles launched across the border into a heavily pop populated area with the express intent to kill, maim, and terrorize. And where, oh where, is the world outrage? There isn't any at all. It's pathetic that the rest of the world stands by, stands by and watches uh, as the citizens of this peaceful town that you and I have just recently been in suffer the consequences of no response from the rest of the world. I'm really sad that the rest of the world just doesn't step up to prevent innocent civilians from being terrorized any longer. Always has been. Sorry. Yep. And I was in an indoor playground there in Starot and they had an indoor climbing wall for kids, but the climbing wall only went to about five feet because they knew if it was any higher, the kids wouldn't have time to get to the bomb shelter. So Barry Nussbaum, he is host of the Truth Report here on America's Voice News. So check him out, everybody.